Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeeta and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic we are going to cover while the development of the teeth take place. So before the eruption, while the teeth is still developing, so whatever the disease which is associated because of the developmental defects, so if there is any abnormality in the development because of that, if what it can cause? So we'll be studying, of course, the reason also and the disease and its features as well. So today's video, we are going to cover the developmental defects or anomalies which are associated with the teeth. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to 5 in 5 series where we cover each topic under 5 headings in 5 minutes. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. So today's topic is the dense indenti or we can say dense invaginitus as the name suggests. Dense, dense indenti that means there will be tooth within the tooth. So tooth in the tooth which is the tooth within the tooth. So, always remember that when we are talking about dense in denti, this will be, as the name suggests, tooth in tooth. So, it is tooth within the tooth, as the name suggests. Dense in vaginators. That means, there will be inner folding of the tooth. So, the to invagination or folding is going to be present towards the tooth. So, there will be a tooth within the tooth, which will give the appearance like this. Once we take look in the radiograph, then the appearance will be like this. So there is again a tooth which will which is seen as a present in, inside the tooth. So the second one is the most commonly tooth which is affected is the maxillary lateral incisor. So usually this is the most commonly involved teeth. Usually there is a bilateral involvement. There can be unilateral involvement also. So this is not always. Then the third thing is that third point is that there is there are the types. One is the coronal type, another one is the radicular type. Now what happens this when this invagination or this folding, when it is extending only up till the folding occurs only till the coronal portion of the tooth, then it is known as only the crown portion of the tooth. So coronal always means crowns, radicular always means root. Always check for R for root, R for radical, C for crime, crown, or coronal, C for crown. So, there are three types in case of a coronal dense indenty. So, in coronal dense indenty, the first one is when this invagination or folding is occurring only in the crown portion. As you can see, this is the crown portion. This is only occurring in the crown portion. Now, the second one is when this invagination or this folding, it is below the cemento enamel junction. As you can see, this is extended below the cemento enamel junction. The third one is when it is extending into the root surface. See, but coronal is away from the pulp. Now, radicular is when it is inside the root inside the pulp. So, before the tooth is calcified, usually when there is a trauma before calcification, so there is the development of the tooth towards the pulp. So, there is an invagination developed towards the pulp which we call it the dense indenty. We have, till now we have studied the dense indenty tooth within tooth invagination or folding which is most commonly seen in the maxillary lateral incisor. Now talking about the clinical form. If it in case of a mild, then the invagination is only present or it is deeply invaginated or accentuated in the lingual pit area. Only the external pit is involved in case if it is a mild involvement. If it is a moderate involvement, that means this invagination will invade into the enamel and dentine and into the pulp chamber. So, it will just invade up till the pulp chamber in case of moderate. And when it is invaded into, into the pulp chamber, now it gives appearance of tooth within the tooth which we call. In cases of extreme form, now when this dense in denti or this invagination, it is extend beyond the pulp chamber. And it is involving into the root. Then sometimes it is called as dilate, di, dilated odontomes. Right. 
so because of this invagination there is going to be the thinning of the enamel and dentin so because of this defective enamel and dentin there are high chances that infection can invade into the pulp so the infection can easily go inside the pulp there can be caries increase in the risk of caries increase in the risk of pulpal involvement so there can be pulpitis pulp necrosis periapical cyst periapical abscess you know what when it happens as soon as the tooth erupts into the oral cavity there is a caries or there is a pulpal involvement then there may be this may be a sign of dense in dentin so as soon as the tooth erupt this infection will invade because see this is uh, this dense in dentin is giving an area to invade so it is giving a path so basically it is just invagination so, so see now it is giving a path for the dental caries so there can be increased risk of caries as well as pulpitis so how do we treat it we actually prevent it with the help of root canal treatment as soon as we know that there is a dense in dentin then we do the root canal treatment after also we do the root canal treatment we try to save the tooth so guys this this is about the dense in dentin the key points are the focal area of invagination on the surface of the tooth will produce a tooth within the tooth appearance so dense tooth in inside dentin the tooth within the tooth appearance and trauma which happens before the calcification of the tooth will usually lead to invagination of the tooth towards the pulp this invagination will give appearance radiographically a tooth within the tooth appearance so once we look at the radiograph see clinically we cannot see but what once we look at the radiograph it looks like there is a tooth which is living inside the tooth and when the pulp chamber is involved then this appearance is usually seen now because of this there is increased risk of there is increased caries susceptibility to the tooth as well as increased risk of pulpitis and we have the coronal type and the radicular type coronal type when this involvement in vagination or folding is limited up to the crown when it is involving the root then it is the radicular type so guys this is about dense in dentin i hope that you guys are clear with dense in dentin and if you have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and also you can comment in the comment box in the description box below now there is a chance to support me on paytm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon guys in the next video